After high school graduation, I enrolled at Occidental College in Los Angeles on a full affirmative action scholarship. I wanted to study with the Marxist professors at what was known as the Moscow of Southern California. My real father approved. He said, I went to college with whites, so I consider myself superior to Negroes reared in Dixie. I arrived at Occidental as a committed revolutionary Marxist. I chose my friends carefully. Maoists, Leninists, Trotskyites, and the Marxist professors. They understood me when I spoke of a coming revolution where the working class would overthrow the ruling class. I became involved with Students for Economic Democracy. I joined their anti-apartheid marches, put up flyers, and contacted former Black Panthers to speak on campus. But it was all mild-mannered to me. So, after two years, and despite poor grades, I transferred to Columbia University in New York City, where I could pursue my growing interest in activism. For 10 years, they were just a bad memory. But now, the Weather Underground and the Black Liberation Army are once again literally blasting their way into the news. Police booked two men and two women on charges of armed robbery and the killing of two policemen and a Brinks truck guard. Police found more floor plans of police stations and weapons, as well as a list of policemen targeted for assassination. Uh, who engaged in detestable acts 40 years ago when I was eight years old. When I was eight years old. The Weather Underground bombing campaign started when I was eight years old, but it continued well into my 20s. Another raid turned up plans for a widespread campaign of terrorism in the United States. The Weathermen's Above Ground Front Group, the May 19th Communist Organization, was based in New York City. They, in turn, operated a host of front groups. May 19 was a revolutionary Marxist organization fighting white imperialism, colonialism, and Zionism. They were handing out flyers at Columbia. It was just what I was looking for. It was a path to earn my birthright as the secret son of Frank Marshall Davis. I attended May 19 meetings, protests, and seminars. I stayed away from the student organizations at Columbia and barely went to class. I became such a Marxist radical. When my sister Maya visited, she thought I was losing it. Eight people have been directly linked by police to the October 20th holdup and murders that has apparently brought together four radical groups. Many of these people I know who are now defendants in the Brinks case, I can't allow them to make me talk about my friends. When Bernadine Dorn was jailed for refusing to testify about the Brinks robbery, her husband, weatherman Bill Ayers, came to rally support at a May 19 event on Union Street that I attended. Afterwards, I struck up a conversation with Bill. We walked toward his apartment on 123rd Street. It was like meeting the Beatles. The weathermen were not anti-war protesters. We will build a revolutionary youth movement capable of actively engaging in the war against the imperialists. They put revolutionary Marxism into practice, something I had only studied in theory. A bomb went off at the State Department early today, and the Weather Underground claims responsibility. I'm not committed to nonviolence in any way. Guard your planes, guard your colleges, guard your banks, guard your children, guard your doors. I told Bill I'd seen him and Bernadine on TV when they surrendered and left the underground. 
Resistance by every means necessary is happening and will continue to happen within the United States as well as around the world. And I remain committed to the struggle ahead. Bill said his father was Thomas Ayers, the CEO of Commonwealth Edison, and one of the most powerful political brokers in Chicago. He said his dad had promised to help Chicago's Attorney General, Richard Daley Jr., become mayor one day if he dropped the riot charges. Federal bombing charges, he said, were dismissed because of illegal wiretaps. Guilty as sin, free as a bird, Bill told me. I wanted to impress Bill, so I told him I joined May 19 because I was a red diaper baby. That my father was Chicago communist Frank Marshall Davis. At first, Bill was shocked. Then he said his dad must have known of my dad from back in Chicago. Bill called his father and put me on the phone with him. That's when Thomas Harris told me whenever I needed anything, just to let him know. Uh, this is a guy who lives in my neighborhood, who's a uh, professor of English in Chicago, uh, who I know, and that was the beginning of my 30-year relationship with Bill Ayers and his family. Later arrests include Eve Rosan, associated with the May 19th coalition, the faction of the violence-prone Weather Underground. Marilyn Buck is one of the links that connects the Weather Underground and the May 19 coalition. Bill said May 19 had been taken over by lesbians who were out to prove their manliness by bombing and shooting up everything in sight. And they would all end up in jail. Bill said, I thought we could start a communist revolution by attacking cops. The device was filled with heavy one-inch staples the staple pierced the skull of one policeman. In San Francisco, Police Sergeant Brian McDonald died today. Bill said, but my pipe bombs were pipe dreams. It's impossible to overthrow the government from the outside. That's why I'm shifting to academic indoctrination, to overthrow the system from within. So with that advice, I dedicated myself to courses with radical professors at Columbia. I studied political Islam with Edward Said, known as the professor of terror because of his relationship with the PLO. The Israeli view has, has I think, had a kind of hegemony, has prevailed to a fantastic degree. Another professor was Marxist Richard Cloward. He had authored the crisis strategy, which advocated overwhelming the welfare roles with minorities collapse capitalism. This model of economic sabotage had bankrupted the city of New York in the 70s. I thought it was brilliant. In the spring of 1983, Bill Ayers and I attended the Socialist Scholars Conference at Manhattan's Cooper Union. They emphasized community organizing as a political strategy. They argued the Democratic Party could be turned sharply leftward by polarizing the population along class lines, forcing Democrats to embrace socialism as their natural ideology. Change won't come from the top, they lectured. Change will come from a mobilized grassroots. The strategy was simple. Inflame the lower and working classes against American corporations. I thought it was a skillful adaptation of Marxist principles to modern American realities. After Columbia, Thomas Ayers arranged a community organizing job for me in Chicago with a $25,000 grant from the Woods Fund. Bill said 
and white communists in Chicago were not making inroads in the black community because blacks were religious people and blacks rejected communism because it was atheist. However, he said, a front man with a black face might win them over. I was elated. My real father, Frank Marshall Davis, had gone from Chicago to Hawaii to organize. Now, I could do the same in reverse. Maybe I could succeed where my father and even Bill had failed. The weatherman is nothing but child's play, it's folly, and they call it revolution. We think these people may be sincere, but they're misguided, they're muddleheads, and they're scatterbrained. Arriving in Chicago, I attended Midwest Academy training retreats for organizers. The Midwest Academy was founded by 60s radicals from the SDS. Are there communists in this organization? Sure, okay. man. There's, there's a lot of communists. You'll see. We're going to replace capitalism with socialism. We're going to replace capitalism with socialism. The community organizer job, they explained, was really community agitator. The term organizer was more acceptable. The function of the agitator was to rub salt in the wounds of minorities, stir up their resentment over economic differences, then mobilize that discontent to take power. Blacks were the number one target, they lectured. Socialists should use them as a weapon, a battering ram to destroy the capitalist system under the guise of problem solving and fair play. We're going to be taught how to organize. The Academy also preached Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals as a blueprint to transform America. First rule of change is controversy. Change means movement, and movement means friction, and friction means heat. Alinsky defined the battle cry of change as a code word for socialism and emphasized ruthless tactics for taking power that he'd learned from Al Capone's Chicago Mafia. It was the best education I ever had. In July of 1987, Frank Marshall Davis my real father died. I attended his funeral in Hawaii. Although I move as one disgrace, I log by this my land for being black. I may go forth again, fighting, fighting, ever fighting. I was quickly attracted to a substitute father figure, Reverend Jeremiah Wright Jr. To get close to him, I joined his radical black church and attended his sermons every Sunday. Anybody who feels white skin is superior to black skin is wrong. Reverend Wright, uh, uh, my pastor, I think represents the best of what uh, the black church has to offer. <laughs> 